always been really artistic and creative, but I was getting very overwhelmed in classes and school, and I would do art to calm myself down. I, I've always struggled with anxiety and ADHD. It prevents me from doing a lot of stuff in my life, mm -hmm. and I had a hard time with controlling my emotions. When I feel like I'm out of control, I, mm -hmm. find, some, I find control in art. Well, art has grounded me a lot. Last year, junior year, I was going through a really rough time, but when I was doing art, it made me really happy, which made me appreciate it a lot more and made me more emotionally connected to my pieces. Just the other day, a student came in. She had a headache. Her head was splitting. Her mom asked if we had Tylenol. And I said, I'm sorry, I don't have any. 15 minutes into her drawing session, her headache was gone. Whether it was gone physically, do we know? Who knows? But the fact is, is she was in a place that enabled her to forget about the pain that she was feeling in her head. And that goes with for pain that you're feeling in your heart, for your spirit, your soul, your mind. It just helps you to be able to put yourself in a place where you can find tranquility. So if I get overwhelmed from too many loud noises or not enough stability, I can always just go and paint and that way I can feel in control again because I'm in control of what goes on the canvas. It's just, it's therapeutic to just like sit down and just paint on a canvas. I have had things like going on in my life while I've been coming here and it's just been very nice to just sit down for two hours and just like learn and just chill out and you're just painting or doing whatever, doing whatever art form and it's just very nice. And Ms. Beth has really helped me with that by showing me a lot of different methods and ways of painting and drawing. I mean it just helps to have a lot of methods to do something as therapeutic as art. My name is Beth Smith and I am a professional artist and owner of Basement Brushwork Studios. I've always loved art. I've always, it's been my passion. We all get asked by adults, oh, what do you want to be when you grow up? My answer was always an artist. I was a graphic artist. Um, I was a illustrator for an author. In between the creative jobs, I would do freelancing. I did sign painting. I did window painting. I did calligraphy. I did um, hand lettered wedding invitations. So basically, if it was some kind of creative outlet, I was down. An opportunity came open to become a criminal composite artist. So I applied, I was accepted. The sheriff there sent me to the FBI Academy in Lively and I was trained to be a criminal composite artist and a skull reconstructionist. So I did that. I took a little hiatus to raise my four children, but the desire to continue something in the creative field was always there. When my youngest daughter was um, just a preschool age, I decided I did not want to put her in a formal daycare setting, so I started teaching her at home, and that's when I caught the bug of really loving teaching. So I said, you know, I want to not only teach, but I want to teach artists coming up behind me um, the craft, how to refine it, how to get better, how to use it to express themselves, how to use it to communicate because rewind back to when I was a child, I had to learn how to use art to not only uh, deal with my emotions, but also to occupy my time. Uh, I used it to communicate how I felt, whether it was I was happy or sad, and it just kind of became my other language. And sometimes it was dark, and sometimes my parents didn't even understand but it was my way of, of getting it out and communicating. And so now I teach my kids, uh, my students, to be able to use their abilities, their love for art, their passion to create. And I help them to harness that and focus it in a positive way in order to deal with their own struggles. It was a really long time ago she told me this, and I don't even think she remembers, but I was doing a acrylic painting, 
and she just told me, she said, don't be afraid to mess up. Like, don't, if you want to, don't be afraid to take your hand across a wet canvas and push everything out of it. Bring color to the macabre, is what I do. Everything I've painted and drawn, even if it's someone getting decapitated, it's kind of, um, it has like a dreamlike quality to it, which I really like. Like, I use a lot of light, float, floaty colors, is what I like to call them. Um, that's why I really like watercolors, is because I can thin colors out and layer them rainbows on top of each other and create this really cool, like, whirlwind of a bunch of different colors. Even though I have struggled a lot with my mental health and everything, I do, I'm a very positive person. And I like to turn things positive even if they aren't necessarily what people would consider beautiful or happy. I like to make them seem that way. I don't want to come here a lot. I know that sounds weird, but I really, like, I'll be coming home from school and I'm like, I really don't want to go to art today. And I'll be, like, crying in the car. My mom's like, nope, you're going to go. And I get here and my spouse's like, hi, Ray. And I'm like, yep, my day is better immediately. <laughs> immediately. It's like, I don't have to worry about anything else right now. I can just focus on my art. And I have every single time felt better after leaving here. I don't know specifically what it is. Maybe it's just Miss Beth and who she is as a person. But I've always felt better. We have kind of a running joke um, in the studio. We have um, called ourselves the Island of Misfit Toys. So after Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, they wanted to be still given out to the children because even though they were a little bit different, they were still valuable. When I was a child, it, that part in that movie always made me cry. And as I got older, I understood why. It's because in my own world I felt like a misfit toy and that nobody wanted me and that I was rejected but I just wanted to be included. No one is a misfit here. We are unique individuals that have a unique way to express ourselves. We've been gifted with something very unique about us that not everyone can do. We have that in common and so we all come together and we share that. We celebrate it. And I think that alone is what helps everyone here have a connection. They connect with me, they connect with each other, and we and, and also just the, the creative energy that's here when everyone is here working, they just feed off one another and bounce ideas off one another and it's there's no better moment than to, to walk in a room full of creatives that, that are all turned on at the same time. It's, it's amazing. It's awesome. The community is great. I do think I've made friends. You know, everyone is so nice. And I, I'm able to talk to everyone. I feel like I'm well acquainted with everyone. I wasn't in contact for a while because I was just super busy with school. But since it's my senior year, I'm not going to be moving away like three hours away. I wanted to come back here and see everyone because I knew some of my friends were still here that I met through the art classes from when I was younger and they're still here. I was talking to her a bit, talking about how I'm now in an AP Studio art class and I want to pursue art as a career now and she was like, hey, I have an opening for a student teacher if you want to come and do that. And it can help you view art in a different way. I've actually applied and been accepted into Kennesaw State University, and I'm going to be majoring in digital animation. Afterwards, I want to go into digital animation for games. Before, when I was younger, I didn't know what I wanted to do. And now that I was able to work with her and get more practice in, I mean, it was like, what? three, four years with her, um, it helped me realize that I really want to pursue it as an art career. I have six days left. I already told you I got two papers to do and I've got a project in my math class. <laughs> i got to finish up my pieces for my AP Studio art. Um, but the one that I like the most, which I think is really interesting, is my seventh piece. Um, that's the one I'm probably most attached to right now because it's about the story of Matthew Shepard. He was a victim of a hate crime. Um, college student, I mean, I think he was like 26 years old, 23 maybe, in Wisconsin. And these guys basically, I think, if 
from college. They knew him and knew he was gay because he was openly about it. Um, essentially, they kidnapped him, brought him to a rural area, tied him to a fence, and then proceeded to beat him to death with the back end of a pistol. He was left for 72 hours. A person on a bike first rode past him, thought he was a scarecrow, came back and realized it was a person who caught an ambulance. He was sent to the hospital and died shortly after. Oh my gosh, that's awful. But the good thing that came out of it was that there was a few years later, the Hate Crimes Prevention Act was made. But I made um, Matthew Shepard out of like clay, but I didn't put any exact details showing it could be like anyone. Um, and once I fired the clay, I glazed it in a red and it came out in a very almost like bloody type. And the thing that was unintentional about it, it cracked a lot, but it adds to the beast. So I have him standing with his arms up and tied to the fence, almost in a crucifix yes. type way. I've always stressed the importance of pushing the envelope, expressing yourself, uh, and not being afraid to confront issues that may not always be popular. Um, with my own work in particular, um, I like to I like to communicate, it, obviously. It's a big part of what I do and what I promote. And the three things I think that, that I am really passionate about that, that I like to paint are government, politics, my spirituality, and social issues. Because I think they're all intertwined. They all affect how we react with one another, the decisions we make in our life. With my kids, what they're going through in their generation and how, are, is different from what I went through in mine. So they're gonna come behind me and they're gonna have their own visual legacy, their own challenges that they, that they painted about or that they were passionate about that they wanted to communicate visually. Too many people are wanting to cancel the other person out and I'm trying to teach my students through my own actions that yes push the boundaries and communicate your message but in the same time you have to have an open mind to the other person's message even though you may not agree with their message and so I think that if we have more of that in the world then we'd have more peace and love and not so much division. If anyone wants to take a class, they can contact me at my uh, through my website, uh, which is bsmithbrushworks.com, or they are always free to email me at bsmithbrushworks7 at gmail, or come and visit my studio, which is here at the office at College Hill at 1305 Hardeman Avenue. If a child feels loved, that to me is the biggest band-aid on the heart. My kids are more than my art students. They're, they're like family to me. And I love them all very deeply. And I think that is also conveyed when they're here creating. Miss B, Miss B is just, you know, part of the family. And, and that's what I love. And that they feel that way about me. And I feel that way about them. And it's just an extension of family.